Welcome to the Mac Life. Dongles. Hey, what's up guys? First of all, I just wanted to thank everybody who watched my last video. I was not expecting to get anywhere near that much uh, attention or positive feedback. Um, so thank you greatly. Um, a bunch of people actually watched that and then asked for some side-by-side -side performance testing. Essentially, what we did was we took apart the bottom of the 2020 MacBook Air and then we used a thermal pad to connect the CPU heatsink to the chassis itself to try and increase some of that thermal overhead and get a little bit more performance. Um, so what we're going to do today, we're going to hop into a screen recording session on the laptop itself. I'm going to run Cinebench R20, maybe a couple of other tests, see how the thermals perform. We'll take the computer apart, we'll take that thermal pad out, and then we'll repeat the tests. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, guys, so we've got Cinebench R20 pulled up. Uh, we're just going to do a quick test run with the thermal pad in. I waited for everything to just about regulate. Temperatures were idling around 50. Um, you can see they, they spiked up a little bit once I started the screen recorder, but I don't think it's going to be too bad. Looks like it's normalizing around 53 degrees. I'd, I'd call that good and flat. Jesus, maybe it's not. 55. Well, you know what, let's just send it. <clears throat> All right, rendering, pass one. And we shot straight up to 100. You can see we got a bit of thermal loss right there. It looks like we, we probably peaked around 2.8 on average and it was requesting three and a half. Um, like we discussed in the first and the second videos though, once this requested line and that light blue average line converge, there's not really much to be gained. Um, if somebody could figure out how Intel and Apple managed to actually slow these things down or come up with that requested curve, then yeah, you'd, you'd definitely be leaving performance on the table with just a thermal pad, but um, until that happens, there's not much to be done. At one point I did actually load up Windows in Bootcamp um, to see if I could get it to sustain like a three and a half gigahertz requested curve and it, it didn't seem to make a difference. Um, I'll try again once we get the copper shim in there just to see how things go. I'll probably also try to boot Linux natively at some point as well. This is all in all still a really satisfying result to me. I mean temperatures are peaking up around 84 degrees. Uh, the requested and the average lines have converged. I still feel like with this thermal pad in, you're not leaving much performance on the table. The nice thing about it is you pull that pad out, you're basically back to stock. Looks like we're maybe halfway done here. Temperatures are still around 84, batting around 11 watts of power. Why don't terminal, like it recognizes terminal commands and then just like, oh. Yeah, the temperature package has settled around 91 degrees. Um, once our, our requested frequency right here converged with our average frequency like there there was nothing to be gained there another really important thing to point out like we are running a genuine stress test core utilization is above 98 percent and there's no noise coming from this thing whatsoever none i mean it's a nice hand warmer it's not uncomfortable by any stretch of the imagination i actually quite like the fact that it warms up because i have cold hands the uh the 16 inch pro does the exact same thing but like this is this is kind of astounding. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, it makes me sad that Apple didn't do a better job because it could be phenomenal. Looks like we're almost done. So close. We ended up with a 603, that's an outlier. <laughs> it's gotta be the screen recording software. Yeah, so it, what we'll definitely do 
uh, without, we'll do another pass of this without the screen recording running uh, just to see what our score comes out to. And we'll watch our temperatures and we'll see what those come out to when we're not doing a screen capture at the same time. And we'll include those data points as well. Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and jump into that. Sorry for, uh, sorry you guys can't see it if nothing else. All right, guys. So fun fact, don't forget to push down those tabs in the middle like I did. You're going to get really confused when the screw holes don't line up. But nonetheless, we're back to a stock MacBook Air. Let's fire up some benchmarks and see how it goes. Yeah, so I wasn't planning on recording this segment. I just I just wanted to point out, you know what? You know what? Let's let's get a screen recording going so that y'all can actually see this. Look at this. Look at we're not doing anything. And it's at 85 degrees. Now it's at 80 degrees. This is crazy, man. I don't know what's hitting the GPU so hard, honestly. Like nothing should be running. Anyway, I just I found this hilarious. We're gonna wait until it, it norm normalizes out and you know, idles at whatever it idles at. It might only get down to like 55. I don't know. I guess yeah. we'll see. Then, then we'll see what it thinks of Cinnabon. Plug it back in and leave it for a bit. Uh, we'll be we'll be back. Yay, Apple things. It's why? Why did you do this? It had it, it had so much potential. It's, it's getting up to 90. It's pretty hot. Are we still recording? Oh, what? It's the screen capture running it up that much? Holy sh What is happening? Yep, so we, we figured out why this is, um, this is so hot. I forgot to turn off the screen capture. So without the thermal, <laughs> without the thermal pad, this thing hits T-Max. Idling while screen capturing. That's ridiculous. What are you doing, Apple? Why would you why would you do this? It could have been so good. <laughs> Screw it though, we're gonna make it good. We're we're gonna fix it. I'm, I'm gonna I'm just gonna turn off the screen capture. I'm sorry guys, I can't record it. Don't get angry at me, it's not my fault. But I promise to you, by the end of this video or the next one, we will make it better. We'll probably make it better in the next one. I think we have too much material for this. But that's, oh, that's crazy. That's insane. I, f I forgot how hot this thing gets without the thermal pad. At least we know the thermal pad works. All right, onward we're testing. All right, I'm not even gonna bother turning on the, uh, the audio for the other one, but it's, it's, it's idling around like 44 degrees. I have nothing else open. It's just Cinebench and Intel Power Gadget. So we're just gonna kick this guy off and see how it does. Sorry you can't see the screen any better. Don't get mad at me. It's not my fault, it's Apple. But I will give you a couple of seconds of commentary at least. Um, so for one thing, temperature shot right up to 100. That's relatively normal. Uh, you can see we got some distance between our average frequency and the requested. And then what I would expect to see here is the temperature stays at 100 degrees and so you, you keep that gap between requested and and actual, which is exactly what's happening. It wants to run, wow, it's going straight up. It's trying to run at three and a half gigahertz and it's it's hitting 1.8 right now. And that thing is slammed. Oh my God. All right, I, I feel like this is gonna take a while as is. So we'll we'll run it three times. Hopefully all three scores are about the same. And then we'll we'll pick back up with a proper video again. All right, guys, we just finished up our uh, our third test in the stock configuration with no thermal pad. Uh, the first run was a 950, the second run was a 988, and then the last run was a 940. So I think rough math on that by just sticking the thermal pad in, it was about a 17% performance increase, right? Um, additionally, like we've we've been saying all along, or at least I have. This requested curve will eventually merge with the average clock speed curve with the thermal pad, which means you're really not leaving much more performance on the table with that. I mean, uh, 
without the thermal pad, this thing was pegged at, you know, 99.8 degrees. With the thermal pad, it was it was floating around 98. So it wasn't actually thermal throttling. It just, it wasn't allowing itself to go faster. Um, but that's it. You know, if you've got some ambition on your hands and 12 bucks, you've got nothing to lose. I mean, if, if you don't like it or you start having issues, just take it out and, you know, I, I, I can't. I can't tell you what to do, but I will say I don't think you'll have any issues. Um, and twelve dollars for a seventeen percent percent performance increase is is astounding. Um, it really does change the laptop overall. It's a much nicer experience. I would not hesitate to recommend this laptop to anybody who's not looking to do like professional sustained workloads as long as they're willing to do that thermal pad. But uh, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so. Stick around, subscribe, I guess, if you haven't. Um, I'm gonna stick this guy in with this stuff in the next video, and we're gonna see just how far we can take the performance. Thanks, guys, that's all I got for you. Like and subscribe, or don't, it's whatever, but thanks.